Welcome to the control room at CTN Studios, located in Ann Arbor, Michigan. You never see this room on TV, but it's from here on the first and third Thursdays of the month, the community comes together to tape Access Ann Arbor. I'm Monique Wright, your host, as we look back 20 years at Access Ann Arbor through the decades. <laughs> This may look a little more familiar to you if you've watched Access Ann Arbor before. Behind me is a current episode preparing to be taped in the CTN studio. It is a true community collaboration. The production crew for Access Ann Arbor consists of community members who are graduates of CTN's free studio class. The show topics, well, that's up to you. Since 1990, Access Ann Arbor has brought interesting people, your neighbors, and their stories into your home. Any resident of Ann Arbor or representative of a nonprofit group can book an appearance on this half an hour talk show. Access Ann Arbor Nights are always on Thursdays, uh, twice a month, and we do one or two shows, depending on if we can book two, we do two. Um, it's Starts by getting all the graphics ready, usually the night before, a couple nights before. And then on Thursday night, you know, and we start building our set, get it all ready, um, get all the crew here, um, get everyone situated. And then when people come, usually about a half an hour early, we'll maybe talk to them a little bit. And then we try to start right on time at 7. And when the people come in, we try to just focus on that group and get them rolling and make them comfortable. So it usually works out pretty good. It'll make it real easy for you to read from the teleprompter, okay? Getting set to go on air. Oh, this is it. Well, this is sort of it. It's a special about the making of this show. The making of the yeah, Saint here Nicholas Greek yeah. Orthodox Church Yasin Festival promo interview. Wow. This is getting pretty good here. So, I'm going to get right here. Show us 10 minutes. At Community Television Network, residents and nonprofit organizations have the ability to come in, get trained on our equipment for free, and use the equipment for free, and then make their own shows. What's different about Access Ann Arbor is that they don't have to go through those first few steps. They can just call us up and say, I have an idea for a show. I would like to utilize the half hour talk show Access Ann Arbor, and we book them in on a time slot. And they come in prepared with their guests, the topic. They provide a host, someone who can guide the conversation. It might be the person booking it, it may not. And get a show on very easily. If you're an Ann Arbor resident and you would like to book the show, 
Your content can be about anything that you think is important, issues that are important to you. And it doesn't matter where your guests come from. You may have guests from all over the world. Um, but the point is, is that something that's important to you. And I think that's the exciting thing about Access Ann Arbor is tuning in and finding um, what people, what's important to people. This is where CTN Studios were located when the first episode of Access Ann Arbor was shot in 1990 above the Central Fire Station on Fifth Avenue, downtown Ann Arbor. That was 20 years ago. CTM is now located on Ann Arbor Southside on South Industrial near Eisenhower. Location hasn't been the only change though. The show Access Ann Arbor has changed over time as well. When the show first started, Access Ann Arbor had a regular host named Barbara Coffer. The program is now hosted by you. That's right, when you book an appearance on CTN's Access Ann Arbor, either you act as a host or you find someone else to guide the conversation. You or your designated host will have intimate knowledge of your subject matter. This ensures that your message will be easily conveyed. In this city building behind me, is where Ralph Samaran, who is now the manager of CTN, originally developed the concept of Access Ann Arbor. Uh, when I first came to uh, Ann Arbor, the Access operation here was in a rebuilding stage. And at that point, I had two permanent staff people, about 10 irregular paid and unpaid interns, and there had been no classes for a year and a half. The studio was in the process of being rebuilt for the last six months and had been out of production. One of the first things I decided we needed was to create a vehicle that would give us a product to put on a channel, a program, that would help promote community access and its operation. And so I reached back to my days uh, of public access outreach specialist with uh, Dallas Cable and took the program I had started there, Open Forum, uh, tweaked it a little bit and came up with Access Ann Arbor. Our budget wasn't very big in those days, uh, so we designed a set to be very simple, um, a form that we call limbo lighting. That's everything's in black except for the chairs that the people sat on. Uh, initially, we provided a host for the program and we did that for about two years. Join us next time on Access Ann Arbor when our guests will be Joe Lansky and Pat Ruby from the Department of Social Services to discuss foster family recruiting. And to heighten it even more and to cause a little bit more excitement, uh, both for the viewer and the crew and participants, uh, for the first several years we went live with the program. So we did one live show every Thursday, you know, so it was four times a month. And it was very kind of chaotic because you're working with uh, volunteers mostly and there'd be one staff person and you know everybody was trying to pitch in and everybody's kind of crossing over so it was always a challenge you know to get the show off on time and to finish on time but it was fun it's a good experience for everybody i think